we've got this um, article here, which is really interesting, courtesy of Sky News regarding Richie Sunak's interesting pledges to, in order to, <laughs> to get the vote for the next fucking election. Absolutely crazy. So Richie Sunak, UK, UK Prime Minister, said the following. He's pledging to remove benefits for people who not taking jobs after 12 months. Now, on paper, I kind of agree with this. But when you get into a nitty gritty, this seems like a really odd thing to do and an odd way to combat, you know, unemployment, to combat whatever situation we're in financially, if it's a recession, whatever it is. It seems like an odd way to go about it. But it's interesting how whenever they want to try and claw back money, governments and stuff, the people that get punished the most are the poor. It's always the same thing. It's never taxing the rich or whatever it may be to claw back some funds because you're going through a bad time. It's always, let's attack the poor first. They're the ones that always have to pay the price and they end up paying the price in the big way. So the article says as follows. People who are fit to work but do not accept job offers will have to, their benefits taken away after 12 months, the Prime Minister said. Outlining his plans for reform the welfare system if the Conservatives win the next election, that's a mad thing to outline, right? Where everyone's hungry, everyone's going through some sort of struggle, and you're saying, hey, if you vote for us, we're going to cut your benefits as, a, as, as like an incentive. Some, most people aren't going to vote for this because it seems a bit mad, but you never know. Outlining his plans to reform the welfare system if the Conservatives win the next election, Richie Sunak said unemployment support should be safety net, never a choice, as he promised to make sure that the hard work is always rewarded. That's true. I, I agree with that. It should be a safety net and not an option. But unfortunately, with you know, with it, how hard it is to fucking even get entry level jobs nowadays in most places, service industry jobs, and the fact that people get taxed an insane amount of money as they gain more experience and start to earn more money, those people that do the whole you know what you call it um benefit scams and shit i see why they do it because there is little incentive to actually get a legit job when after you get taxed you end up with fucking 900 pounds when you could do the same thing just sitting on your ass and scratching your balls just claiming benefits you know that's the issue so if i if i was them if i was the conservatives to really try to kind of sweeten this deal I'd be like, hey, this is one side of my proposal. I'm going to cut benefits and I'm going to make sure that if you don't take a job after 12 months, your benefits get cut so you get forced back into work. But I'd also say I'm going to lower the tax bracket or the tax amount that you pay if you earn over a certain amount. So that would give people an incentive to get back into work. Because at the moment, looking at the UK tax bans, right? Look how fucking crazy this is. In the UK, if you earn between... 12,517,000 per year to 37,700 per year, you get taxed 20%. But in the moment you start to earn over 37,000, which I think a lot of people do because, you know, if you work long enough in the UK, you've got enough experience and you're not a dummy, it's, it's easy to get a salary over 38, over 37,701. It's not that difficult. This is usually people's like first mid-level job with a bit of ex with a bit of responsibility and shit. So a lot of people are making this amount, 37 plus, but then they're getting taxed 40%, which then weirdly enough makes you your take home shit. Because then you end up not really get, you know, getting what you should be getting out of the 30, the more you're fucking earning. And sometimes it's probably more beneficial. Like I've done in my past when I've worked and stuff, I've sometimes purposely gone for jobs that I'm probably overqualified for just because it allows me to sit at this tax bracket. And it also allows me not to have as much responsibility and I can kind of come in and go, right? I can kind of, you know, clock in and clock out type of thing. But obviously for the company, it's not a good thing. For me, career-wise, it's not a good thing because I don't really get to push myself or learn new skills because I'm kind of, you know, operating under my level. For the company, they don't get to a chance to kind of exploit my skills and get the most out of me in order to kind of help their bottom line. And everybody kind of suffers. So if the government actually said, hey, we're going to cut benefits, cool. But then we're going to lower the tax bracket, let's say to 30% over this and amount. That would make it quite appealing. But just telling people that are on benefits and struggling anyway, after 12 months, if you don't take a job, you're just going to get back into fucking, we're going to take away your benefits. Doesn't do anything. It doesn't solve the issue, in my personal opinion. Because there's, you need to kind of address the reason why these people are on fucking benefits over 12 months anyway. Like, what the fuck is going on that they can't find a job within 12 months? Yeah, that's what you need to figure out. And then when you when you see that, you probably realize that just taking away the benefits after 12 months doesn't actually address the issue. But again, I could be wrong.
Mr Sunak said the government would be more ambitious about helping people back to work and more honest about the risk over medicalizing the everyday challenges and worries of life by reducing or sorry by introducing a raft of measures in the next parliament they include removing benefits after 12 months for those deemed fit to work but do not comply with the conditions set by their work coach which is fucking funny like it's hilarious as well because they're assuming you're getting offers that's the funny thing they're assuming people are getting offers within 12 months there's probably people there that haven't got offers in 12 months maybe even over 12 months so in order to you know in order to get the job in the first place you need to be applying getting interviews which is obviously not also guaranteed it's just a funny way to go about doing things it can another one tightening the work capability assessment so that um, those with less severe conditions will be expected to seek employment a review of the fit note system to focus on what someone can do to be carried out by independent assessors rather than gps i guess this is introduced because from what i led to understand i didn't know this is a thing there are people in the workplace especially in the uk who definitely exploit the sickness thing, thing because we're quite depending on the company you work for the uk is quite lenient when it comes to how long you can be off sick i think it's like two weeks or something which is quite wild so a lot of people are probably exploiting that taking a piss especially post pandemic you could imagine people like you know you know lying about having covid and shit or having long covid and taking mad amounts of time off so that's obviously not good Changes to the rule so someone working less than half of a full week um, will have to look for more work. Fucking hell, they want they want everybody out there on the fucking, you know, they want everybody out there in the mines, isn't it? They don't want anybody sitting on their ass. A consultation on PIP um, to look at eligibility claims and target support, such as offering talking to therapies, ther talking therapies instead of cash payments talking fair yo it, when people <laughs> the last thing you want when you're poor <laughs> is therapy you just want money you want food <laughs> you want a warm blanket introduction to the new fraud bill to treat benefit fraud like a tax fraud honestly bro can you first arrest white collar criminals please what's happening with the fucking royal mail and then with that scam maybe put those guys in jail first instead of jailing to make a fucking benefit fraud the same as tax fraud it's fucking wild there's going to be loads of mums around the country going to prison for like 20 years because they put on a claim that they've got four kids instead of two wow bro maybe arrest some of these fucking you know um mps and shit like the woman who had a council house and sold it you're not meant to sell it what the fuck is going on here he insisted the changes were not about making the benefit system less generous adding i'm not prepared to balance the books on the backs of the most vulnerable I'm not prepared. I'll say, I thought he said, I'm prepared. Or I thought he said he, he is prepared. That would have made me laugh. He said, I'm not prepared to balance the books on the backs of the most vulnerable. But you are doing that, you fucking dickhead. Instead, the critical questions are about eligibility, about who should be included, who should be entitled to support, and what kind of support best matches their need. <laughs> Honestly, man, they are brutalizing people out here. But Labour said that it was the Tories' handling of the NHS that had left people locked out of work. And, dis and disabled charities called Measures Dangerous. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. It is fucking crazy. But, you know, I guess they're trying something. I guess they are trying something.